In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is Monday of the Holy Pascha week, the eighth of Tuesday, actually. And I'm going to go over the events of the day, but before I start, actually, uh, Holy Week is a very important time for our life. All the Father agree that if you are not going to benefit from the church during the Holy Week, you will never benefit from the church. And Holy Week actually comes every year to help all of us really how to transform the time that we live here on earth to become a salvation time. What that means? Salvation time is the time to help us to get close to God. And that's why everything during the Holy Week designed to help each one of us, how can I be close to God? And I tell you one of the best advice actually for the Holy Week. The best advice was given by Saint Ambeshluda the Ashman retreat today. Early morning, actually, if you come to the morning prayer, he gave a beautiful homily. And in this beautiful homily, actually, he spoke so much about the importance of sitting by yourself. Therefore, very important to transform the time that we have here on earth to become a salvation time. Make sure to, to take a time out and sit with yourself. And he actually called it, he said, you know what? When you sit yourself, each one of us was basically the designated you have your garden angel. For your garden angel actually will take whatever you offer to God. Let me read actually quickly the homily of Ambeshulud the Rashmi retreat. He said, My brethren, if we want to escape the punishment, my brethren, if you want to escape the punishment of God, I think all of us want to escape the punishment of God, right? He said some advice here in Bashrul the Rashim retreat. He said, if you want to skip the punishment of God and find mercy in his eyes, let each one of us at the evening of every day sit alone and examine himself. Which means every day you must take a time out and sit with yourself and examine yourself. Examine yourself concerning the things that he offered. To the, uh, that it's uh, considered the thing that he offered to the angel who accompanies and serve him all of which he will carry to the Lord. He said, you know, make sure that every day you sit with yourself and offer to the garden angel and tell him actually what's happening. The best advice I will give you during the Holy Week, make sure that every day call a time out. And if you watch basketball or you watch any games, make sure that the coach, when you see the team, is losing, first thing will say, let's call a timeout. And the Shunit Rashmi retreat today said, look, I'm telling each one of you, in order for you to benefit from the Holy Week, to transform the time that you have here on earth, to become a salvation time, a time will help you to be close to God, a time to discover who God is, only will happen when you sit with yourself and examine yourself. And this is just an advice during the Holy Week, make sure that sit with yourself Examine yourself and understand this is a time, it's a salvation time, a time to help me to be close to God, a time to deepen my relationship with God. It's not just a time to come to church or attend and just enjoy these beautiful hymns, enjoy these beautiful sermons, enjoy this beautiful service. Then you go home and no change. Honestly, Holy Week is about one thing, how you and I can change our life, how you and I can change our life. Let's go back to the events of the day. As I mentioned even yesterday, it's very important to understand the events of the day. Yeah, and yesterday, the main events, our Lord God said, Jesus Christ, asked his disciples to go find the donkey. They got the donkey, he sat on the donkey, he entered into Jerusalem, and everybody was happy, excited. All the children, everyone, even the Pharisees, they all start, uh, the disciples, they start shouting and saying, Hosanna, blessed he comes in the name of the Lord. Then after that, he drove away. He went to the altar and he cleansed the altar. Then after that, he started weeping over Jerusalem. And today, and then at the end of the night, he went and he stayed the night in Bethany. He stayed the night in Bethany. So this morning, he left Bethany. And while going to Jerusalem, Bethany is about two and a half miles away. So he went to left to Bethany, going to Jerusalem with his disciples. On his way to Jerusalem, they find a fig tree. And the big highlight of today, basically, 
you find the fig tree once during the summer the late summer you find it comes with a lot of leaves all the leaves that means that the tree is actually bearing some fruit but sadly he looked at the tree and he find it has a beautiful leaves looks good but it has no fruit it's fruitless كان منظرها حلو من بره ولكن من الخارج ايه مش كويسه فهي كرس actually the fig tree and this is a tough message to all of us even if you noticed the gospel we just read right now it's all about hypocrisy hypocrisy and he started actually came so hard on the Pharisees he said you know what you look good from inside but inside actually you do not look good at all for he cursed the fig tree then after that he went to the altar he spent all day today in the altar then at night he went back to Bethany and I remember Bob Shenouda in his beautiful book actually commentary on the Holy Week he spoke so much about Bethany he said sadly enough can you imagine the Lord the God he's actually Jerusalem we call it the city of God that's his city the beautiful city the magnificent building and the most important thing in Jerusalem is the altar of God can you imagine the Lord God leave Jerusalem and he stayed the last night in Bethany but you know what Bethany in Bethany a different home it's a small village it's a very poor village but one thing is good about it, there is the house of Martha and Mariam and also Lazarus. Lazarus, as we know a little bit about Bethany, who loved Christ and Christ loved him. This is the house. This is the house that the Lord loved. In Bethany, Martha, she loved service. I know all of us who speak about Martha and Mariam, we always praise Mariam and put Martha down. But Martha actually made Mariam to look good. We have to give some credit to Martha too. Martha made Mariam to look so good. But Martha actually was serving God. But Mariam did something different. Mariam was sitting under the Lord in a, uh, meditating on his word and listening to him. And in life, you're always going to have Martha and Mariam. And also you have Lazarus. Bob Shruda actually, in his beautiful uh, book, he said when he read first time, he read the, uh, the, uh, in the, uh, he read the, the, in the Bible said he left to Jerusalem and going to Bethany he said actually I said and I started crying because imagine kida, I leave my own house and I go find another house that means his own house in Jerusalem he could not find peace in it in his own house he could find rest but he only find peace and rest in Bethany and you ask yourself, and I will ask myself, are you Bethany or are you Jerusalem? Are you Bethany? If you are Bethany, Lazarus has loved the Lord. Do you love the Lord the way he loved him? If you are Bethany, Martha loved to serve the Lord. Do you serve the Lord? If you are Bethany, Maryam loved to sit and talk to the Lord. Do you, do you speak to the Lord? It's very emotional, actually, when you read the word, he left his own city, his own town. They call it the town of God, his own city. And he could not find peace there. All this beautiful city full of many motels and hotels and beautiful, amazing. But he actually at night, he kept leaving Jerusalem to go to Bethany. Very sad. I'm sure our Lord God, Savior Christ, he was so emotional while he was leaving Jerusalem to go to Bethany. It's my own city. It's my own altar. It's at the town that God chose to be his own place. Yet he did not find peace there. For sure he's going to do that by the way today. He's going to go to Bethany and stay the night. Tomorrow he will leave Bethany, go to Jerusalem, spend the day also in, Beth in Jerusalem. But tomorrow he will spend all day teaching in the altar. Wednesday he will also go back to Bethany on Tuesday night. Wednesday same thing, he will spend the day in Jerusalem. Then the betrayer on Tuesday then he will go back to Bethany. Then after that, on, Holy, on Thursday, he will go to Bethany and, and he will go to Jerusalem in the morning, but he was not, he's not gonna return anymore because he's, he's gonna spend the night on Holy Thursday, Gethsemane, then Good Friday. Just Bethany is a very beautiful place. The Lord loved Bethany and loved this house here. He loved Bethany. 
Ask yourself, are you Bethany or are you Jerusalem? And I hope also our church to be always Bethany. A church full of happiness, full of joy, full of service, full of loving God himself. Then the events of the day. By the way, just a quick, Yanni. I was actually talking to somebody today. Because in Mark, in Mark, Mark chapter 11, mentioned when, while he was going, leaving Bethany, going to, on Monday morning, going to Jerusalem, he actually cursed the fig tree. Then he cleansed the altar. There's a lot of debate about this. Actually, if somebody, one of the youth can do a research for us, because we know that our Lord God, Jesus Christ, he cleansed the altar twice. First time when he started his ministry, to emphasize the importance of basically cleansing the altar means repentance, to clean our heart. That will be in Mark, in, in John chapter 2. But the second time actually cleansed the altar after he entered into Jerusalem. But somehow Mark mentioned it on Monday. I was actually talking to one of the people today where exactly he said, you know, Mark mentioned Monday, but actually in the other three gospels it was mentioned on Sunday. But, you know, he went and cleansed the altar again. Even so, yani, the debate about Monday or two, one is a, a Sunday, but the bottom, yani, in Mark today mentioned, actually, too, you'll see in today's gospel, which is the first hour gospel, after he cursed the victory, he taught in the altar and he started teaching, then he cleansed the altar again. And the message for us, does your altar need to be clean? I think I need the Lord to come in my heart to cleanse my altar, to cleanse my heart. But I want to focus today on the fig tree. Our Lord God, Jesus Christ, lived to Bethany. As you know, that the fig tree looked very beautiful, looked very nice from outside, but inside did not look at all. Narda, I have been about Lom Alan Narda, and it came on the sugar of the tina, like a manzara, hell, and all from the bara, but from inside, eh. كانت للأسف ما عندهاش أي فروت ما عندهاش أي فروت يعني and St. John the Baptist John, John the Baptist spoke about really when you do not have fruit in Matthew chapter 3 verse 10 when he started talking about repentance he said every tree that does not bear good fruits it cuts down and throw it into the fire it's a very sad message it's a tough message every tree that does not bring fruit, therefore it will be cut down and will throw in the fire. Very important to ask yourself, as I told you the first question, to ask yourself, are you Bethany or are you Jerusalem? Do you bring good fruits or not good fruits? Do you bring good fruits? And we'll ask you, Abuna, to what are the fruits should I bring? I will tell you very simple. Look at the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. In such, there is no law. You see, after he mentioned all the nines of the, whole, of the fruit, fruit of the Holy Spirit, he said, by the way, in such, there is no law. If you want to understand the real law, the law of God, the true fruit, you will find it in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And you ask yourself, do I have the love that God gave it to me? Joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and also in such there is no law. But I'm going to talk about how the sugar is going to have fruits. The fruit is the most beautiful fruit. It's the most beautiful fruit. It's the most beautiful fruit. It's the most beautiful fruit. Let's say it together. Mahabba, farah, salam, طول أنا لطف صلاح إيمان وداعة تعفف وبيقول لك إيه ضد أمثلة هذا إيه ليس لموس I hope you can say can we say it in English so our parents said it طب let's say the fruits of the Holy Spirit in English love together love joy peace long suffering goodness faithfulness gentleness self control but you ask yourself, how can I bring this fruit here? How can I bring this fruit here? Or actually, let me refer my question. What exactly the Lord requires from me to have this fruit here? I want to have the fruits. I want to have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I want to walk and I will be exactly little Christ. That everybody sees me, see Christ in me. So I will go back to the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy, by the way, I'm going to share something very beautiful with you. 
Moses, you know, Moses took the two tablets. You can don't be, don't look to the yet. I'm gonna. Moses actually, God, the Lord, the God, when he went to the mountain, he gave him two tablets. Then he took the two tablets and he came down. And after he came down, he saw the people actually after four days, sadly enough, they drift away from God. They start worshiping the golden cow. Moses was so angry and upset. He took the two the tablets and threw them out and from his hand. And he broke the two tablets. God was so upset from Moses. But later on in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses actually start to actually t the Lord God appeared to him and tell him this is I'm going to read for you second at Deuteronomy chapter 10 he said at that time the Lord said to me how for yourself two tablets of stone like the first and come up to me on the mountain and make yourself an ark of wood he, the Lord actually instructed Moses tell him go get two tablets the first two tablets, actually, the Lord made it for them and gave it to him. But this time, actually, Moses asked Moses, you know what? No, you go make two tablets. And I will write on the, on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke, and you shall put them in the ark. He tell him, look, once I write, you bring the two tablets on the mountain, I'm going to write on them. And the face, same words, the same ten commandments that I give it to you from the beginning. And once you take them from me this time, go to the ark and put them in the ark. So I made, I made an ark of a second wood, held two tablets of stone like the first, and went up to the mountain having the two tablets in my hand. And he wrote, who wrote here, the Lord God, and he wrote on the tablets according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord had spoken to you in the mountain from the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly uh, and give them to me. He said, you know what, after that, he gave it to me. Then after that, he told him I wanted to choose Levi, which is verse 8, and his children will become, will become basically will serve me. Then in verse 10, 10 he told him, look, in verse 11, I'm, so, I'm sorry, the Lord told him, go and preach to the people and talk to the people. Then after that, he told him, what should you do? Remember, I start with a question, what the Lord require from me? What the Lord want from me? How can, I have, how can I bear fruits? And actually, Moses here, after he took the two tablets, he went to the people of Israel, and he started talking to them, look, here is what the Lord wants from me. And now, Israel, what does the Lord, your God, require of you? What does exactly the Lord God require from you? And he said to them, But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his stature, which I commanded you today for your good. The Lord actually telling Moses, You know what, Moses? Moses is telling the people, I'm sorry, you want to know what the Lord God wants from you? How can he bring good fruits? He wants five things very important. I'm going to list the five quickly actually here. Number one, he said, fear the Lord your God. Number one, number one, for number one, the Lord God tell Moses, you know what? Make sure uh, the people, uh, the, uh, Moses told the people, make sure fear the Lord your God. Fear God. Fear God. Fear, as mentioned in Psalm 111, verse 10, he said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to have wisdom? You want to be a wise person? Learn how to fear God. And also in the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 7, he said, the, be the fear of the Lord, the beginning of knowledge. You want to know who God is? You want to discover God? Number one, learn to fear God. If you want to bring good fruits, it will start when you start fearing God. If you want to have a good tree that brings good fruits, fear God in every action that you do. Number two actually said to him, you know what? Walk in all his ways. And I'm sure the problem that all of us who struggle with it 
or they can choose God's commandments. But he's telling him here, you know what? Let's look for kullu turu'u. Kullu turu'u. Walk in all his ways. Number four, he said to him, you know, number three, I'm sorry, love the Lord, love him. Which means to love God. Loving God is the first commandment was given to us. I read something very beautiful actually about the Ten Commandments itself. He said, by the way, the Ten Commandments was given Moses, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. They only reveal one thing to us. The Ten Commandments reveal to us how to love God. The first tablets written on it, Four Commandments. The first Four Commandments, it's about how to love God. How to love God by having no other God except God. How to love God by having God and respect to God and our God by honoring His deity. How to love God by not to mention His name in vain. So the first, actually the first tablet has four commandments written on it, actually how to love God. The other tablets has actually six commandments, how to love others and respect others. So actually one of the fathers said, you know what, the Ten Commandments is one thing only. It's actually the boundaries for us, how you and I can love God. How we love God by honoring your parents. Love God by res gifted, uh, respect the gift of sexuality. Love God, love God by do not steal and take other people's stuff. That's how to love God. So actually the Ten Commandments given to us, it's the boundaries that help each one of us how to love God. So number one, fear God. Number two, walk in all his ways. Number three, fear God. Number four, he told him, serve the Lord your God. Serving God is not actually required by certain people. I think it's mandatory for each one of us to serve God in a different way. He can serve him in any different way. And when you serve him, make sure you serve him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. I love the Samaritan woman. After she met Christ and it changed, she went out to serve God and she became the first preacher to tell everybody, come and see a man who told me everything. And the last point actually said, keep the commandments, which man, tahfaz wasit rabbina. I hope especially this is good for the young man. Make sure to memorize the word of God. Yani one thing I noticed, uh, yani us growing up in Egypt, we learn in Sunday school, make sure memorization is something mandatory. Yani before you finish sixth grade, you know at least most of the Ijbaya. And now when you pray, you don't need the Ijbaya anymore. I became Ijbaya by himself. Matter of fact, I remember uh, during our last mission uh, to Egypt, uh, la uh, not last year, the day before, and uh, we went, we were stationed in Minya. I went to uh, attend the, I, I attend actually the Sunday school. Come on, for sure, the servant there, they have a lot of time, Shwaya. If they go a little bit early and they decorate the room, whatever the class will reflect. But they spend the first half an hour just only speak, talking about one thing, memorizing. Let's give thanks. Psalm 1, uh, uh, Thanksgiving prayer. Memorization is a big part of the program. And by the way, in our church here, we have the program of the memorization, but make sure follow with your parents. I know that Amgad has like a good program of memorization. Midhat with his also the diaconate, we teach the kids memorization. Memorization is a requirement. And that's even, he told Joshua, make sure that, you know what? Memorize the word of God. Write it down in all your hand. Put it on your forehead. Make sure that the word of God will be part of your life. I hope today, ask yourself, if you wanna be fruitful, if you want to be fruitful, and if you want to have the fruits of the Holy Spirit, number one, learn to fear God. Two, as he told Moses here, walk in all his way. Number three, love the Lord your God. Number four, serve him. Number five, keep or memorize his commandment. May God bless you and glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.